What is it that warranted the desire of state planning efforts to establish this special anti-robbery squad? SARS is the special anti-robbery squad. And it's, a, it's, a, it's an arm of the Nigeria police. Uh, the Nigeria police force established SARS in 1992, actually, because um, there was a, uh, Nigeria was in turmoil at that time too. There were a lot of armed robberies and there was um, a bit of disorder because Nigeria was going through intense um, neoliberal uh, imposition of structural adjustment. Mm -hmm. So students were protesting, scholars were protesting, and um, there was a lot of um, suffering in the country. Now, with all that, there was also increase in criminality. Mm -hmm. This body was founded ostensibly to go after armed robbers and to uh, prevent their nefarious acts and secure, you know, provide security for the population. Mm -hmm. Instead, Nigerians called at that time SARS, kill and go, okay? Mm -hmm. Kill and go, mm -hmm. which means that these people became like an occupation force. And so without any kind of um, um, discernment, they just um, inflicted violence on the people. As a result of this, there have been complaints about SARS from the, 19, from the early 1990s. I think it's coming to the consciousness of the world now because the young people of Nigeria decided that enough is enough. Because they decided that, okay, so as a result of these complaints, that SARS was killing people extrajudicially, mm -hmm. that it was brutal and authoritarian towards people, it was abusing human rights, it was also extorting money from people. So these complaints were always there the young people have carried it to a new level. And I have to say that I admire them. They're speaking truth to power because the Nigerian government promised in 2017 that it was disbanding SARS. In 2018, they said they, so SARS came back. 2018, they said, okay, we are disbanding them. They came back again. Mm -hmm. 2019, they disbanded SARS. It came back. And then the most recent disbandment. So, clearly, the state in Nigeria is weak and unable to, um, to be the body that political scientists expect to be the only legitimate body that can say, okay, this is what is supposed to happen in terms of the security of citizens, and then that stands. Mm -hmm. We have a weak state, but a very authoritarian state, okay? Mm -hmm. So the expectations of Nigerians is that if there's a police force, the job of the police is to protect and to defend. Our constitution is also uh, in support of this. And the president of Nigeria referenced this yesterday, mm -hmm. okay? That the constitution says that the primary responsibility of the government of Nigeria is to protect the security of all Nigerians. And, you know, the, our constitution also gives people the, all the democratic rights. Mm -hmm freedom of speech, which is when you go and protest peacefully, that is freedom of speech. Okay, we also expect the government to be legitimate. The government should not be inflicting violence and brutality and abusing human rights of people. Mm -hmm. What these young people are saying is exactly what 
people have been complaining about all along. SARS members were raping women. Oh SARS God. members were killing people extrajudicially. Mm -hmm. SARS members were extorting money from people, holding them up at gunpoint, taking them to the ATM and say, withdraw money or we will either kill you or beat you within an inch of your life. Mm -hmm. So a body that was created to defend and protect Nigerians became like a colonial army of occupation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so these are legitimate grounds for, 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 for protest. Mm -hmm. And you know, the young people, con they have comported themselves with so much dignity. Mm -hmm. And they've been clear. They have made demands about what they want the Nigerian government to do. Mm -hmm. You know, which is, this force should be disbanded. Okay, so the government, the 2020 disb uh, disbanding of SARS was done, but immediately they disbanded SARS they constituted something called SWAT, mm -hmm. okay? Which is essentially not really different from SARS. Mm -hmm. And allegedly, the of officers in, um, in SARS were reconstituted into SWAT, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, many, some of these people don't wear uniforms, so you can't even identify them as law enforcement they definitely don't show anybody IDs. Mm -hmm. They just command you to do things and they inflict violence on you if you don't comply. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem too is that when people are affluent in Nigeria, our 0.1%, mm -hmm. they do not experience this. They live a privileged life. Actually, a lot of them have police guards, the uniform wearing ones, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, Nigeria is a very young country. Majority of our population is young, 60% mm -hmm. or more. Many young people go to the university or they do tertiary education. First of all, it takes forever because there are strikes. Mm -hmm. So uh, education that should take you four years might take you eight years and 10 years. But once you finish, there are no jobs. Mm -hmm. Only the children of the people in government and their friends and get, get jobs watch. easily in Nigeria. So a lot of young people are underemployed mm -hmm. or unemployed. And then a lot of the things that they're trying to do in the informal economy is also criminalized. Mm -hmm. Now in Lagos, which is one of the epicenters of these protests, they have even banned Okada. Okada are motorcycle taxis mm -hmm. that unemployed youth are using to they generate some income. Yeah, they yeah. said, we don't want that in Lagos. So what are ordinary people who are not from this filthy, rich, kleptocratic, mm -hmm. elite sector, what are they going to do? Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, and the, the bringing of legitimate protests about conditions in a country to the government ought to be treated with respect. Because these are citizens, many of whom voted for the government in power. Mm -hmm. If they even did not vote for the government in power, they have to be respected. Mm -hmm. Because democratic rights are not a pick and choose thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a whole package. So when these students are asking, I mean, these um, young people, some of them are students, mm -hmm. are asking for Nigeria to respect its constitution to make sure that the police are not harassing, killing, raping, and holding up people, you know, uh, and extorting money from them, they are right. Mm -hmm. When they say that if the police has killed people or disappeared people, mm -hmm. the government needs to do investigations and account to the citizens for every single life. Because guess what? If it was the president's son or daughter, or cousin, or something, and SARS dares to kill them, they'll be held to pay. Exactly, exactly. And no Nigerian life is more valuable than any, Niger any other Nigerian life. Mm -hmm. The life of the family of the president is precious. Mm -hmm. So is the life of the people on the street. Some Nigerian families live on the street from birth to death. Mm 
-hmm. Some are under the bridges in Lagos and other cities. Some of our children are beggars, the Almajiri, Al mm -hmm. you know, because they go to these Islamic schools where the clerics make them go and beg. Mm -hmm. Some of our children are supposed to be in school, they're on the street talking, you know, um, goods and commodities. Some of them are supposed to be in school, they're household staff for the elites of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Young children. Mm -hmm. If you go to public schools in Nigeria, many of them, like the K to 12 schools, it is heartbreaking. Some schools do not have roofs. The roofs are leaking. There's no sanitation under COVID conditions. Mm -hmm. Lagos is full of slums, overcrowded, okay? Mm -hmm. In many of these slums, they don't have running water. They do not have the sanitation, the basic sanitation that you need to be safe under COVID. Mm -hmm. Nigerian roads are, you know, non-existent, mm -hmm. you know. So infrastructure in Nigeria is a challenge. Nigeria has no power, including in hospitals where they need to keep people on life support. If you don't have a generator in Nigeria and you don't dig your own borehole, you're not going to have water, you're mm -hmm. not going to have light. So every person is like a local government mm -hmm. that you are going to. And then many of the um, places that have um, good roads, the community actually collects money mm -hmm. and builds it. So it has to be an affluent community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Healthcare facilities in Nigeria are terrible. Mm -hmm. So our president, anytime he has a cold, he runs to Germany or the UK or someplace else to get the best care. His son had a motorcycle accident. They rushed him to Germany. Oh. The children of Nigerians are dying from preventable conditions for lack of a good healthcare system. Mm -hmm. I went to university in Nigeria. I went to the University of Ibadan. Mm -hmm. It was a world-class institution at the time. The Nigerian government over the years have allowed this um, universities to be devastated. The physical plant is crumbling. Mm -hmm. There are not enough resources. Like I said, there are so many strikes by the professors that many of them are closed more than they are open because the conditions of work for the professors, they're untenable. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have all these things, and then, you know, we have COVID, lockdown, Tell me how an informal economy person is going to, to, to put food on the table under COVID. And then the government said, okay, we are going to give palliatives, which is their support for people who, uh, who need it. Then the money, kleptocrats stole some of the money, and then they burned the ministry mm -hmm. that where the accounting was being done. So now, okay, the ministry is burnt. We don't have anything to prove anything. And now, you know, yesterday, the president came on TV to make to address the nation on this SARS situation. Mm -hmm. The way he was talking is like somebody reading a laundry list. There was absolutely no compassion. Mm -hmm. And then he threatened Nigerians, you know, mm -hmm. that we better stay away from all this thing or I don't know what. So, and then he says he's addressing all the concerns. Listen, these people have stolen Nigerian money. You know, the president himself might say, I didn't steal, but he's sitting there while money is being stolen and he's promising us that he's anti-corruption. There are people in Nigeria who you don't know, they are not doing anything, but they have money because kleptocracy just runs rampant. Mm -hmm. And some of them, the business that they're doing is only because they're connected with the state because there's crony capitalism. Mm -hmm. Now, Nigeria belongs to all of us. Some people have oil blocks in Nigeria that the government gifted to them. Mm -hmm. This is all our oil, okay? Mm -hmm. So why should the children of the masses be suffering? Why should their lives be, 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 be made to be cheap and expendable? Mm -hmm. And dispose, why should they be treated as disposable mm -hmm. when the children of the wealthy 
They go to school. They don't even go to school in Nigeria. You know, they go to some of the best universities uh, abroad. Outside the country, yeah, yeah. Yes. So yeah. it is only COVID that this year made it impossible for them this year to come and do their whole photo shoot. Mm -hmm. where they are showing us uh, their children graduating from Oxford, exactly. Columbia, mm -hmm. Yale, Princeton, even UMass, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what the young people are saying is about SARS, that we do not need a violent and brutal dictatorship under conditions of democracy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're calling for thoroughgoing, genuine democracy. Mm -hmm. For the state to respect the rights of citizens because the constitution is a compact mm -hmm. and a social contract between the people and the government. So it cannot be treated as though what is written there are just mere words. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. The implications of the students, of the, of the, of the um, young people saying this is that they are longing. They are longing for true, genuine, you know, deep democracy. Exactly, exactly. And that democracy has to be participatory. It's more than just going to the ballot box and um, voting. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. about voicing your legitimate concerns in an organized way. Now, so these students, these uh, young people, they made five demands because the government came up with five conditions. This, the, so, you know, we have a five for five. And the five for five is, listen, this brutality must stop. Mm -hmm. Two, investigate, find who is doing this, and prosecute. Also, if you have killed people, the state, you must compensate the people that are survivors. Exactly. Okay? Mm -hmm. You must also eliminate, I mean, abolish this SARS, and let us just have straightforward police. Plus, there's been a lot of demands in Nigeria for the decentralization of the police because the police is federal and federal police is not going to be able to, uh, to, to understand local conditions. In many cases, because we're multinational in terms of our, of our um, languages, you know, a, a police person might not understand the language even of the place where they're, they're posted. Mm -hmm. You know, be, uh, of not all Nigerians speak English. Exactly, yeah. So, um, we're asking for genuine democracy yeah. in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And the government of Nigeria wants to do politics as usual. Don't, don't say anything for two weeks when all this thing is, is going on. And then, you know, what happened um, that, this, that, that really, I said, my heart is broken. Mm -hmm is according to reports and documented evidence. Mm -hmm. Two nights ago, in Lekki, by the toll bridge. Lekki is a middle, you know, a, a middle class suburb, part of Lagos, you know, on the island part. Mm -hmm. By the toll bridge, there were protesters an army was sent, armed forces were sent. Mm -hmm. Before the armed forces were sent, um, the light and the cameras that could record what was going on, they were disabled. Oh. And then in darkness, the armed forces were shooting into the crowd. Oh my God. Allegations are that trucks were brought, bodies were removed, and now the government is saying it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. that nobody died oh. so do you know something Nigeria is not a colonial um, you know territory mm -hmm. Nigeria belongs to all of us mm -hmm. and the masses the poor, the dispossessed the marginalized they are the majority if democracy is worth anything it is the rights of the majority that should actually prevail not the minority that is stealing and cavalier and, 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 and cold under these really horrific conditions. Mm -hmm. So whatever the president said is woefully inadequate. Mm -hmm. You know what? 
democracy is not just something that we talk about. It's not what people feel, how it impacts on their lives in concrete ways. Exactly. Yeah. Every day. And then, so, so if we have an impoverished population as a result of kleptocracy, and then people are forced to sell their votes in order to be able to eat, it yes. is also an atrocity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we yeah. should not have that kind of condition. And you know, Nigeria is one of the richest African countries. Exactly. And I was going to ask that, uh, you know, uh, Nigeria is... Uh, is reported to be one of the one of the biggest economies in terms of GDP yeah. because it records volumes uh, bigger and bigger volumes of GDP because of the oil uh, money. So what what's happening with that? How how is it that we have one of the most poorest people in the continent, but with an economy that generates so much money from oil? What what okay, happened? So I'll there? use a phrase that you are familiar with: Dutch disease. Of, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Dutch disease is about the fact that, you know, you have a really uh, lucrative natural resource, mm -hmm. but then you have a venal and kleptocratic elite that has decided to appropriate the patrimony, what mm -hmm. belongs to the generality of Nigerians as their own personal, you know, property. Mm -hmm. And then to use it, as part of their, um, you know, patron client um, system of rewarding their friends and their followers. Mm -hmm. So this under this kind of system, like I said, Nigeria. Okay, so people talk about one percent and ninety nine percent. I say Nigeria has zero point zero 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 point zero 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 one percent. So a very tiny mm -hmm. elite that feels privileged and entitled to lord it over the rest of Nigerians. And then during election campaigns, they will go into communities and do what Nigerians call stomach infrastructure, which is to give food, right, mm -hmm. to people. And that food will be stamped with the name of the candidate, rice, a bag of rice, a loaf of bread, uh, you know, some macaroni mm -hmm. to people. Sometimes, you know, for the people that they really want to, uh, that they feel will not accept just food, they might give a sewing machine uh, or an okada or something, you know. Mm -hmm. So this is the share of Nigerians from the general wealth. This yeah. is what the politicians do. Now, Nigerian elected officials are in, the, in our national legislature, they're also the most highly paid in the world almost. Now, so about the oil, the oil market is actually, it has tanked, you know, mm -hmm. and COVID-19 has made it worse because there's less transportation happening, you know. Okay, yeah, so yeah. The, the price of oil in the international market has not been buoyant in the last couple of years. COVID has made it worse. So we can say that since Nigeria is almost like a mono economy that depends almost exclusively on its petroleum sales, you know, the resources are less available. But that being said, it has not prevented, you know, uh, elected officials from going for these medical jamborees where they spend our money. Mm -hmm. Also, anytime Nigeria goes for an international conference, thank God for COVID, they can go. They would have the biggest delegation. Mm -hmm. And these people are on government sub subvention. Oh my really? God attractive packages so that when they are coming back, they can bring a plain load of stuff for oh their family. God. Oh my God. You know, so they have pay and perks that are just unbelievable mm -hmm. and immoral and unethical for a country that has a teeming population of poor people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, is it wrong that people whose children sometimes die from not having enough food. Mm -hmm. That some of those, some of the young people, some people are saying, oh, it's the privileged children that are talking. So is it wrong to be one's sister's keeper or your brother's keeper mm -hmm. to say, you are not doing this in my name? You know, and then you turn the guns on them and then you said it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. 
And you're saying the international community should mind their own business, essentially, you know. Mm -hmm. So for me, I am a citizen of the United States. Mm -hmm. I'm also a citizen of Nigeria. Yes. I kept my Nigerian citizenship. Mm -hmm. And I have been active in um, helping, you know, in my own area of uh, competence to build human capital in Nigeria. So I am entitled to speak. Exactly. exactly. I also have my three sisters live in Lagos. Mm -hmm. Their children, my nieces and nephews, mm -hmm. their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I have a niece who lives in Lekki. Mm -hmm. I have cousins. I have classmates from high school who live there and their children and their grandchildren. Exactly. So I am, so this concerns me. And for me, you know, the way I live my life is whatever conditions I feel are good for me mm -hmm. is what I feel is good for the fellow human exactly, being. Exactly, exactly. Whether or not this it's is the what we expect mm -hmm. from the government of Nigeria. This is what we expect from the political elite and the economic elite in Nigeria. Now, by the way, a lot of the economic elite in Nigeria could not have whatever it is that they have without them being uh, cronies of the people in government. Mm -hmm. So I am just saying clearly that genuine democracy is what Nigerians signed up for. Mm -hmm. They haven't felt it. They haven't seen it. They're demanding it. It is legitimate to do so. Okay. The yeah. Nigerian government has um, has exercised a you know a significant amount of cluelessness and ineptitude and an embarrassing you know um, uh, amount of obduracy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the face of these young people who really are asking for us to take ourselves and our lives seriously and build a Nigeria that is possible if we use our resources well. Mm -hmm. And then they are shot. And then we are supposed to just accept it. Mm -hmm. And it's done. It is not done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The government of Nigeria has to account for what happened. There must be a commission of inquiry that looks into what happened. That commission of inquiry must contain women. Mm -hmm. Because Nigeria also has a, 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 a habit of throwing in talking women. Mm -hmm. eh? It must contain youth. And it can't be handpicked people by the government. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. This have to be people who have something to say. Mm -hmm. Something. Some people who have the, the, the consciousness to seek the best for Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We have to have differently abled people. They're also ignored. Mm -hmm. Now, we have to have the professional organizations that have the training to engage many of these issues. The mm -hmm. lawyers. We have a really active bar association. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And... You know, this muslin, there's also been significant muslin of the press because all these things that were happening were being reported by international media and the Nigerian media was quiet. Why? Nigeria actually has a, a, a really vibrant media sector. So when they're quiet, then for me, I practice the hermeneutics of suspicion. Mm -hmm. Why? Who is muzzling them? We need all this nonsense to stop. Freedom of the press is also sacrosanct. Mm -hmm. And respect for life is a part of all um, decent people's thinking about how you live your life as an honorable person. Mm -hmm. Now, I would like to ask Nigerian officials if it was your children that were mowed down by all these in the dark, by the unknown soldier. You know, Fela had a song. Mm -hmm. Because under the military dictatorship, 
soldiers went to Fela's house, threw his mother out of the window. She, she was injured and she never recovered. Mm -hmm. She died, you know, and arrested Fela, beat him up. We said this was the military. Mm -hmm. We didn't accept it then. We're not going to accept this from a democratic government. So there's a lot of accounting to do. And it is not just coming and reading some paper. Mm -hmm. It is not saying we have done. They are giving people 30,000 Naira to start a business. It, like, how much money does the president spend in eating mm -hmm. on a day? Mm -hmm. I, I go to Nigeria every summer to do research. Mm -hmm. It's a very expensive country. Mm -hmm. So the idea that people have, oh, if you take one, one, one dollar to Africa, it can feed 200 people. Please. Mm -hmm. Stop it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nigeria is highly expensive. Uh, okay. Mm. And the, 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 the wealth, natural resources, and possibilities of reaching your full potential that exists in Nigeria, it has to be democratically available to all Nigerians. Mm -hmm. So economic democracy is also a demand. Because yeah. this is what we fought for. We fought the British. Mm -hmm. Because they came and they were doing what essentially the Nigerian state is doing now yeah. to our people. Mm -hmm. And we said that when we get independence, life is going to be abundant for all Nigerians. Mm -hmm. That's the Nigeria we want. Mm -hmm. A Nigeria where full equality is normal. Mm -hmm. Where the schools for the rich, you know, you can have an expensive school for your children. Mm -hmm. But the schools for the children of the poor must be uh, run according to best international practices. Exactly. Okay. Nigeria has the most out of school children in the world. Over 12 million. Majority of them are girls. Mm -hmm. Now, 12 million is more than the population of some countries. Mm -hmm. And Nigeria signed an agreement they call Education for All, mm -hmm. EFA. Mm -hmm. There are very few decent jobs in Nigeria. Decent jobs are the ones that give you social security, mm -hmm. that give you a safety net, where workers' rights are, are, are respected. respected. Exactly. Nigeria is a signatory with, uh, 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 what is it called? Uh, the tra um, oh, geez, sorry, has signed international conventions to this, uh, to this end. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is part of uh, signing the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. Mm -hmm. Does it respect the rights of women? So we need governments that if you sign something, your word is your bond. Yeah. Because that's our, what our constitution says we should expect mm -hmm. from our government. Mm -hmm. And so when we are calling on you to do this, uh, to stop calling us uh, unpatriotic. Exactly. We are the patriots. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. We are the patriots. And then we are also helping you to bring out the best of your consciousness to kind of get yourself organized, whatever you need to do. Do you need to pray or meditate mm -hmm. or go and read actual books mm -hmm. and get, you know, acquainted with the constitution? Yeah, sure thing. Stop stealing our money mm -hmm. and sharing it among your friends. Stop talking to us as if we are idiots. Mm -hmm. Nigeria has some of the most brilliant people in the world. Sure thing. That's you can see when you see people who come into international spaces, how they shine. Mm -hmm. Now, you have this wealth, you have the natural resources, eh? you have the people, and you're squandering it, mm -hmm. and you're acting as if your future's life is dispensable. The youth are our future, and we say that in this very stupid way, oh, the youth are the future. The youth are the future, and you're killing them. The youth are the future, and the schools are in the state that they are. Mm. The youth are the future, and infant and maternal mortality in Nigeria is some of the highest in the world. Yeah, so yeah. For goodness sake, Nigeria needs to take itself seriously, take its foundational documents seriously, yeah. and that's the constitution. Mm -hmm. Take its people and their dedication to the goodness and progress and future of Nigeria seriously. This is what the protests are about. Yeah, and so until that happens, there will be no concession mm -hmm. to this government that just wants to come and read a, a, a laundry list. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. And then you cannot kill people's children and not do investigation. Mm -hmm. 
and tell us what happened. Who is responsible? Who are the people who send the thugs to go and disrupt the protests and make it violent? Mm -hmm. It's Nigerian politicians. Exactly. So, you know, the capacity to do this investigation is in Nigeria. We don't even need any international anything because Nigerians are brilliant. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the heartbreaking thing that actually in the past, studies have been done by high-powered commissions. None of the conditions, none of the recommendations are implemented. They're just sitting on dusty shelves. It is a culture in Nigeria. That culture must stop. Yeah. So this commission of inquiry that I'm calling for, that the women's rights organizations are calling for, that the youth are calling for, that the Bar Association and all people of conscience are calling for, it must work speedily with no waste of money mm -hmm. and no perks, you know, because service to the nation, just like we ask the National Youth Service Corps, our young people who graduate from university, to deny themselves and give service to the nation. Our elected officials must deny themselves, show Nigerians that they can sacrifice. Mm -hmm. They give them free housing. They give them free cars. Yeah. They even have a wardrobe allowance. Did they come to government naked? Mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. And then we have people on the street mm -hmm. begging for food. And we, we have no, no, no compassion. The people who have compassion, they came out and they said, look, all this stuff must end. Yeah. Let's take care of our people. Let's have one Nigeria. And then you kill them. Mm -hmm. And you expect that everything will calm down. You know why? Because as much as Nigerians are brilliant, they never, you know, they're very long suffering. Mm -hmm. Instead of struggling and being on the streets, people will be fasting and praying mm -hmm. for God to change the minds of all these oppressors. Mm -hmm. And some of the pastors will be telling their congregation, not to join any, pro actually some of them are telling them now. There's a pastor, Oyaki Lome, mm. who I hear, told, sent a dispatch to all, one of these mega churches, Prosperity Gospel. Mm -hmm. They must not join any protests. Oh my goodness. And people are, you know, the churches, um, some of them say people should submit to duly constituted authority. Oh my goodness. So we need liberation theology in Nigeria. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we need an awakening about the fact that we live in a competitive world. Mm -hmm. Nobody is going to wait for Nigeria to get its act together. The yeah. world is moving. Mm -hmm. And under COVID conditions, it's very dangerous for us to be doing politics as usual. Yeah. For the, for the banditry, that has gone on, the, the cluelessness, the lackluster quality of, of political discourse, and chicanery, and also stealing elections through rigging. It yeah. all needs to stop. Mm. Nigeria can do better because we are brilliant people. Exactly. And I have hope, okay? My hope is in the youth of Nigeria. What they have done is impressive. Mm -hmm. And any person of conscience in Nigeria must support them. The international, I, you know, okay. So let me praise um, um, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris yeah, yeah. for speaking out in support. Mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton spoke out in support. Exactly. There are some celebrities I don't, you know, I don't follow celebrities, mm -hmm. but I know some celebrities have also spoken out. Yeah, spoken, yeah. We thank them, you know, but you can see that the youth of Nigeria, they are handling themselves in, a, in an impressive way. Yeah. And so I am so, as much as I'm heartbroken about the deaths, I am so impressed. I'm a mother. Mm -hmm. And I cannot imagine for my children to go out on a protest and then they're shot yeah. by, by the police state security agents in the dark. What kind of democracy is that? Mm -hmm. So my heart breaks with the hearts of those parents. And then they're doing gaslighting. Nothing happened. It mm -hmm. is just, uh, 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 mis uh, you know, we are doing fake news. Mm -hmm. Please let them get real. Yeah. Because there's no, we are not going to have this kind of nonsense. Mm -hmm. 
the, the lives of those people that were lost, they have to be accounted for. Mm -hmm. And it is a never again season in Nigeria. We are never going to accept this kind of brutality yeah. from any government. Mm -hmm. Because we voted. I mean, I didn't personally vote, but I campaigned for Buhari. Mm -hmm. So he must be accountable to me. Exactly. My people, all those people in Nigeria, they're my people. Mm -hmm. All those children on the streets, my heart breaks for them. So President Buhari, get your act together. Because you cannot sit in Aso Rock and then come out and say some, you know, just whatever. Yeah. And go back and say you've said something. We need to see. We need to see a, a real change. Uh, you know, a, a transformation of Nigeria so that it becomes the true giant of Africa. Right now, it's a giant without feet in tattered clothing, yeah. you know, and it's a disgrace. Yeah. But you see where the hope is, is in the youth mm -hmm. because they have shown us what is possible. So the people of my generation, and I'm saying this, you know, people don't know. I'm going to be 62 this year because mm -hmm. some people who look aged, they come out, they start spouting nonsense. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking for the older generation. So I'm part of that generation, okay? A, a lot of us are behind the young people. Yeah. We admire them. We are embarrassed because we, you know, so there have been struggles in the past, but then those struggles, we do them, then we go home, we leave the work for these um, inept politicians. Mm. That's not going to happen anymore. The blood of those who have been killed must not be shed in vain. Yeah. Because if this were the president's children or the children of the vice president or the cabinet or the members of the National Assembly, they would declare days of mourning mm -hmm. and even give them money yeah. and send them for a spa treatment or whatever. Mm -hmm. eh? Mm -hmm. They are not going to let you kill ordinary people's children and get away with it. Because if it was your children, this is how I'll be also speaking. Mm -hmm. Our lives are important. Mm -hmm. Your life is important. The life of the person on the street that doesn't have two cobalt to roll together mm -hmm. is equally important. And many Nigerians are so religious. So what God do you serve that says that it is legitimate to go and kill people in this way mm -hmm. and then come out with a a, a dry presentation that doesn't even show that you have compassion. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's unacceptable. And my support is for the youth. And guess what? For me, this is a lifelong struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, because democracy is worth fighting for. Uh, but that fight is a peaceful fight. I will, uh, you know, I don't have weapons of violence. And the state better call it. Uh, it's a uh, um, military. The military is supposed to be defending us against external uh, attacks. Mm -hmm. The military was supposed to, to defeat Boko Haram. They mm -hmm. haven't done it all. Mm -hmm. Because I'm also fighting for the Chibok girls to be rescued. Exactly. 112 of them, after six years, are still in Boko Haram hands. Mm -hmm. Thousands of Nigerian women, thousands of girls are in Boko Haram hands. Boko Haram has used girls under, under teenage years as suicide bombers. We have not defeated them. And then you are coming and attacking peaceful protesters. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. So I know that majority of my people are not senseless. So the government should not be acting in a senseless way. Mm -hmm. I am really heartbroken because ordinarily, you know, I would not um, use this kind of language. I'm, you know, I'm even mild because mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you haven't heard me curse. I don't curse. But right. many, there have been many, many curses. Uh, you know, there's, there are prayers you can pray from the Bible that mm -hmm. is curses mm -hmm. that people are saying against the government of Nigeria and this elite mm -hmm. because they are heartbroken. Mm -hmm. You know what? If you fear God or if you care about how posterity is going to regard you, Come to your senses. Organize yourself. Mm -hmm. Respond to the legitimate demands of citizens. And respect.
respect our youth because, you know, I am proud of them and I'm hopeful for the future. And there are many of us who are determined to be in the struggle for Nigeria's soul mm -hmm. so that genuine democracy and, you know, human security would be taken seriously by the people who govern us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, 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 I've been wondering to, uh, to ask this question that what has been the response of uh, let's say the government in particular and the uh, the regional economic cooperation of West African uh, of West African states. I understand that there is ECOWAS in in West Africa. What, yeah, there's what? ECOWAS. Nigeria is actually the um, the big power in ECOWAS. ECOWAS, right? <laughs> okay, so I have not. Um, yeah. I don't think I've seen anything from ECOWAS. Um, the government of Nigeria, mm. see will say to you, we responded, because actually they entered into negotiations with the youth. Mm -hmm. And so the president, part of his laundry list yesterday was to say, eh, eh, we responded and we are doing this and we are doing that. And he's mentioning some uh, meager amounts of money that they're going to use to do um, youth empowerment, 30,000 Naira per youth, and they're going to do 100,000 youth and whatever. I'm not taking that seriously because there is serious money in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now, all the oil blocks that were given to people need to be taken back. There's no reason why <laughs> Nigeria would be given a, an oil block mm -hmm. as a present. Mm -hmm. The oil belongs to all of us. Yeah, Look exactly. at the oil producing um, co uh, communities. They are devastated. The environment there is, 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 is wrecked. Mm -hmm. And there's massive poverty because the marine life has died. People are fisher people, they can't fish. Look at um, the vegetation there. They are flaring gas. Some, some of the people there have never seen darkness mm -hmm. ever since Nigeria has been producing oil. You can imagine what that does. There are a lot of diseases that people have contracted as a result of the conditions there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm kind of digressing to say, okay, I don't think, you see, um, these international organizations, if we take a realist perspective, mm -hmm. they're tools that the powerful states use to project their power, to enhance their prestige, mm -hmm. and to get away with what is essentially murder. Yeah. You see the U.S. doing that in, in, in international organizations too, you know. Mm -hmm. So for Nigeria, West Africa is its area. So even if ECOWAS says anything, Nigeria can ignore ECOWAS. Nigeria is wanting to do this superficial response. Eh? Mm. So what I'm saying is the time for politics as usual, for superficial responses, for making all these pronouncements that when, once they make it, then they go and they start partying, enjoying their lives, or whatever it is that all those people do. Mm -hmm. That time is over. I don't want to be seeing any kind of uh, pronouncement. I want to see the action, implementation mm -hmm. of progressive measures that enhance human security in Nigeria in a clear way. Exactly. And when it is enhanced, you see, we'll see in the Human Development Report that the social and economic indicators in Nigeria are rising. Yeah, yeah. Not be telling me, uh, read some paper and then go home and everything maintain, you know, remains the same. Like I said, they have um, abolished this SARS and it was coming up like a zombie every time. Mm -hmm. It didn't die. Mm -hmm. So nobody believes what the government, there's a deficit of trust because it's like, show us. Yeah. Show us, let us feel it. And as we are feeling it, see, Freedom House will increase Nigeria's democracy, democracy ranking. Mm -hmm. The Committee on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women will, will, will elevate Nigeria's ranking. Mm -hmm. the, um, the Human Development Report will elevate Nigeria's ranking. So don't be, you know, we are not foolish. Yeah. We're not foolish. It's not political. So listen, 
ECOWAS now, if you want to do something, you get behind the youth. AU, you want to do something, get behind the youth. And guess what? All these institutions actually have done a lot of publications on youth unemployment and sustainable development. They say they are committed. So show your commitment. Exactly. And I'm talking also for other African countries. You know, let's show that we, we value the lives of our people. Mm -hmm. And when we show that, it will show up in the indicators. Mm -hmm. Nobody needs to. So there are measures. It's not like this is a rocket science. Yeah. So for me, I don't want to be hearing any rhetoric anymore. Mm -hmm. Show me. I, tr I will trust when I can verify. Yeah, sure thing, sure thing. As uh, Ronald Reagan used to say, I don't like Ronald Reagan. <laughs> you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not a supporter of Reagan, but that trust and very, but verify is a very useful, like, soundbite. <laughs> oh, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Professor Okome, thank you very much for, uh, for your participation uh, in these interviews. Uh, this is the platform where I get to sit with uh, established academics to uh, have a discussion of uh, issues of the day and to have a discussion of uh, at some at some points books and articles to review them their central arguments and so forth for the purposes of teaching and learning and conscientizing our student community and the ordinary person i'm very much happy to have heard you thank you very much and have a good day my pleasure. I would love to come and talk about my books. I have six. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. So